So good morning to all of you. Today uh, we are moving ahead with our next topic, which is a dipole moment. Earlier we have covered with refractive index, and we have seen the optical activity, specific rotation, optical rotation. and the things associated with all those now let me share the screen so is it visible to you yes, yes sir. sir yeah so today we are going to discuss about dipole moment dipole moment uh, is being associated with the polarity you you might have already familiar with the polar and non polar molecule but still we will take a quick, quick revision of that and then we will proceed for the our main topic that is dipole moment considering physical properties of drug molecule dipole moment is very important because dipole moment and it advanced term you can say or associated term which is dielectric constant both the terms are being associated with the solvents as we know solvents are there they are helping us always they are dissolving the solute to get the solution so all the solvents which we are using right from the water which we are referring as universal solvent up to the all the organic solvent so all these solvents are essential for drug dissolution for drug solubility when we consider the therapy i am always repeating that you will get the multiple time of repetition of all these things but which i am trying to say just now what we need whenever certain medicine we are administering we are administering the capsule or tablet what we need we need the tablet should get dissolved when the tablet goes from the mouth up to the stomach it should get dissolved as early as when it will get dissolved in stomach then only after that only means when it would get dissolved whenever we, we are saying that it would it will get dissolved means solution get formed of that tablet earlier it was a tablet which is in solid form it would get dissolved within the stomach with the stomach contained okay so a solution will get formed 
at that location as we know that after stomach all the contents is going towards small intestine and further in the large intestine the journey of drug solution from stomach up to the large intestine through small intestine it will take too much time because we know very well that small intestine is having very long length and when the drug would get dissolved it would be it would be in the form of solution earlier we, we i told that to get the entry of drug into the blood circulation to get the entry of drug or drug molecule into the blood circulation first and foremost important thing or at most important thing it is the drug solution without drug solution without the formation of drug solution you cannot imagine you cannot imagine that drug and its molecules will get entry in the blood circulation you can't imagine that you never imagine that so what to conclude with this point we want the drug should get solubilized the drug should get dissolved unless and until it would not get dissolved it will not get entered in the blood circulation through the microvilli of small intestine or whatever the absorption site it will be coming in the path so for most important at most important repeatedly i am telling why repeatedly i am telling here because uh, it is unique it is only needed a drug should get solubilized first then only further journey of the drug will get start into the body okay so drug solubilization is very very important here now as we know whenever we are talking about the solubility and formation of solution two things are there a solute should be there and a solvent should be there solvent will dissolve the solute and solute will get dissolved by the solvent here a solute will be our drug and solvent will be our water most of the time because whenever we are taking the medicine we always consume the water which is the universal solvent which is our biological solvent too because we don't uh, we do not uh, drink alcohol to be a normal got it what we what we are drinking every time we are drinking the water only so water becomes a solvent for the drug also and when the water would be there or the stomach contained would be there obviously it is it will be there in the form of water liquid form okay so whichever the drug which has been consumed it would get dissolved by the water now the water water will act as a solvent drug will act as a solute and both of them combinedly forming a solution in stomach or either in stomach or in the small intestine region as soon as water dissolves what water dissolves drug it will start get entered in the blood circulation okay it will be eligible the drug become eligible for the entry into the inside the blood circulation 
it will get done by water water is acting as a solvent without solvent drug cannot get dissolved you can imagine that without solvent the drug is getting solubilized drug is getting dissolved no there is a need or the must need of solvent for the drug dissolution okay so that solvent we came to know that solvent is the very very important aspect for the drug absorption and for the drug bioavailability so to understand the solvent in much more depth becomes highly essential so our focusing point will become now a solvent a solvent generally having two types polar solvent and non polar solvent okay polar solvent non polar solvent fortunately our water is a polar solvent fortunately so that water allow us to dissolve most of the type of type of drug most of the type of drug. our drug may be a weak acid or weak base or it salts having varying chemical nature but still water is allowing us to get dissolved by it. drug will get dissolved by the water no matter mostly what kind of chemical nature the solute is having water is there so the question will come which property of water which property of water which characteristic of water which thing of water making it a universal solvent the answer is its polarity the polar nature of water making it such a solvent which can dissolve most of the thing okay so for that we need now to understand what exactly the polarity means and how the polar solvent is differentiating from the non polar solvent i guess you are getting all the things okay now for that our target would get focus on to the polarity aspect of a solvent because a solvent is needed for the solubilization better solvent rather best solvent is needed for the solubilization of what solubilization of drug and solubilization dissolution solution form of the drug because it is highly essential so that the drug solution only can get accepted by the blood circulation so for all these reasons we are now trying to learn trying to reach what exactly exactly polar molecule means so it becomes our uh, you can say uh, center point to understand the polarity of the molecule we want the molecule should be polar and fortunately water is there which is highly polar okay so we will focus we will concentrate we will try to learn what exactly the polar molecule is here you can see a polar covalent bond is unequal sharing of electrons between two atoms every time most of the time in pp you will you have to go up to the molecule or you you need to go up to the electron cloud and from that sense from that point only you need to correlate it with the our our uh, the point of understanding or the point of teaching so that is always needed to make the correlation in between the the point of teaching and the molecule of a particular material or the electron cloud of a particular material always you need to be, you made a bridge in between them okay then only you can say 
your understanding of pp is quite good got it so basically uh, as we know that uh, there are multiple chemical bond multiple type of chemical bond ionic bond covalent bond coordinate bond all these we will not go into the detail about the co coordinate bond and the uh, ionic bond we are focusing concentrating on the covalent bond everybody knows covalent bond resulted resulted through sharing of electrons sharing of electrons okay in between at least two atom at least two atom so polar now additional point got attached over here a polar covalent bond a polar covalent bond is unequal sharing unequal sharing as you can see in the picture this is unequal sharing imagine that they are all electrons present or electrons of two atoms but they got divided themselves unequally so unequal sharing of electrons between two atom earlier in the during the formation of covalent bond they have promised they would they would do the sharing but what they are doing now they have done the sharing they are doing the sharing but they are doing it unequally keep in mind they are doing it unequally unequally means in the territory of these two atoms in the territory of these two atoms more number of electrons uh, get resided towards one atom whereas small number of electrons get resided to the another atoms vicinity are you getting my point what i am trying to say so so that in such a manner unequal distribution is happening keep in mind i am talking about the two atom i am talking about the two atom means the content of a molecule the content of a molecule remember that these two atoms are a content of a molecule so in a molecule there is unequal distribution unequal residence of electrons that's it i have never told that there is a permanent separation of electron there is a permanent giving or taking of electron sharing is there but still their residence is unequal although they have promised they would share there is sharing but unequal sharing okay so these are unequal sharing now i am focusing on unequal sharing okay this unequal sharing giving that particular molecule or making that particular molecule a polar one a polar molecule so this is the base this becomes a base unequal sharing becomes a base for the origin of polar molecule polar bonds are formed when there is a different between difference between the electronegativity value of the atom participating in a bond we are talking about the electrons obviously imagine that here it is as you can see over here uh, h2o h2o electrons are there with h this h electrons are there with o and electrons are there with another h also but still there will be unequal distribution of electrons in this region as you can see over here both the h contained with one electron one proton whereas oxygen in oxygen in uh, h2o is contained with atomic number of o 8 8 proton and 8 electron now compare the difference compare the uh, number in between oxygen and these two hydrogen obviously the electron or in other words electron cloud electron cloud 
will be more residence of electron will be more when we, when we are considering a molecule whole molecule number of electrons in o or towards o toward the region of o in the vicinity of o will be higher whereas although there will be two hydrogen associated with each one electron still there will be less crowd of electron when we consider the two hydrogen so in between them anybody can guess that oxygen is rich with electron in its vicinity whereas hydrogen is uh, you can say deficient or contain with less number in its region in its region similarly nh3 all these things getting different as you can see for nh3 n atomic number of n 7 am i right 7 n means 7 electron and rest of the things is r h 1 h second h third h one electron one electron one electron the different the different cloud will be here also similarly with h 2 s s s ka kitna atomic number what is atomic number of s what is atomic number of s sulfur 60 i think is it 70 17 or 16 something 16 16 okay mm. so easily you can guess over here if you got understanding of what i taught just now here easily you can guess the cloud of electron number of electron in s region will be higher as compared to h region so all these things i think you got the understanding of what i am trying to say have you got have you got yes have, sir yeah, yeah just tell me whether you got it or not okay have you understood or not so here as being 16 in its electron electron number obviously in a molecule now let me uh, concentrate on one word in a molecule region wise region wise in this molecule electrons cloud with more towards s and less towards the hydrogen so this difference make them polar polar means one pole is s another pole it may be h so two poles getting far one is electron rich another pole is electron you can say deficient 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 means not in terms of valence yeah just in terms of regional separation here it is electron uh, less contained with less number and there electron contained with more number that's it there is no giving or taking of electron there is no exchange of electron but just a regional separation in a molecule and that regional separation of a molecule giving us a polar molecule a polar molecule so all the example which has been given here here it is a polar molecule electron density i am talking of the electron cloud is distributed asymmetrically asymmetrically symmetric means our body our body if you cut vertically longitudinal section in a biology language our body is symmetric it will divide ourself into two equal similar halves but if you can uh, divide this if you can distribute this uh, molecule you will find that electron rich region is will go towards one side and electron deficient region will get divided into another side so that is called a asymmetric which is not symmetric unequal equal is symmetric unequal is asymmetric distributed asymmetrically 
throughout the molecule. So very slowly I am going so that you should understand what exactly polar molecule is. Okay, once you understand the polarity, it would be very uh, easy for you to understand the further concept. Okay, Cl negative H positive, Cl negative H positive. So here, Cl negative. When we consider Cl negative, 17 Cl, 17 Cl, 17 Cl, 17 electron will be there. H being associated, one electron is there. So obviously, Cl chlorine is electronegative, more contained with electrons towards its region, towards its region. Got it? Polar covalent, polar covalent bond. Now, what is non polar? What is non-polar molecule? It is very easy now to understand. In the picture only, you can easily understand. There will be equal number of electron. A polar covalent is equal sharing of electron between two atoms. A polar bonds are formed when there is a similar, similar, the electronegative values of atoms participating in a bond. Electron density is distributed symmetrically within the molecule. Within the molecule, you can take the example of this two hydrogen atom means one hydrogen molecule. One electron by in one it towards one side, another one electron in the other side. Symmetric distribution, equal distribution. So it is non-polar, non-polar, polarity is not there. When unequal sharing will be there, then only you can say polarity will be there. The electron will go towards one pole. It is not going towards the another pole. The density of electron is towards one pole. So that this is the base of polarity and non-polarity. Cl, 17 Cl, 17 Cl. 17 electron towards one side, 17 electron towards another side. So, all these bases makes them non-polar. So, always keep in mind, this is a non-polar covalent bond, wherein both of them are happy, because the distribution of the electron is divided equally, shared by both the atom equally. So, equality will not generate the polarity. Non-equality will generate the polarity. Keep in mind. Okay? Now, the next classification of bonds. You can determine the type of bond between two atoms by calculating the difference in electronegativity values between the elements. The bigger the electronegativity difference, the more polar the bond. We have taken the example. We have taken the example of HCl. In HCl, one atom is more electronegative, whereas another is less. So the type of bonds, if the difference between these two will be in 0 to 0 0.4 only, then we can say the non-polar covalent bond exists between these two. Non-polar covalent. If it will be in between 0 0.5 to 1.9, then the polar covalent bond will exist. And if the difference between them or the difference between electronegativity in them, in between two atoms, which is forming, which is uh, participate, participated in the formation of a covalent bond, 
and if it is the difference between them electronegativity difference between them is more than 2 to 4 then i n equal one will get result a so in this way we can easily classify the bond based on the difference between their electronegativity now let me recall why we are learning this because it should not happen that we are understanding all the things and we are forgetting about our main target our main target is our drug should get dissolved our drug should get formal solution at the site of absorption and our solvent always helps us in doing so and so that we are focusing on to our solvent and when we are trying to focusing on our solvent we came to know that polarity polarity can give us can help us or can help solvent can help solvent so that the solvent can make drug more soluble so the property of solvent which making it an agent which can solubilize most of the drug it is the polarity it is just polarity so that we are focusing on or concentrating on the polarity polar and non polar moiety polar and non polar bond polar and non polar compound this we are focusing okay so these are the uh, problems we have discussed they are, they they have find the difference and all these things we are not going to the detail of that okay so how we can summarize this in a polar bond one atom is more electronegative than the other in non polar bond both atoms are similar electronegativities and uh, an asymmetric molecule with polar bonds is a polar molecule an asymmetric molecule with non polar bond is a non polar molecule a symmetric molecule regardless of the polarity of the bond is always non polar molecule okay so let, later we will go to detail so here we are trying to align this polarity and non polarity with dipole moment as you can see the diagram over here here very very correct diagram they have given there is a difference as you can see over here oh h contained with one electron o contained with uh, o contained with eight electron so that we need to assume that they got partial negative charge and here partial positive charge okay because what they did they have done the same thing unequal distribution of electron region wise o will always uh, attract or have more number of electrons towards it whereas hydrogen will always have less number of electron they will occupy they will grab although sharing will be there whenever we are saying sharing it both the things or all the electrons all the electrons originated from o and h they are all the electrons are the property of both all the all the property of both लेकिन अगर ऐसा बताया जाए कि अगर दोनों के पास पैसे है दोनों ने इन्वेस्टमेंट किया है लेकिन पैसा रखने के लिए किसके पास रहेगा तो किसी एक के पास रखना पड़ेगा तो इट वुड बी मोर टूवर्ड्स ओ एंड लेस टूवर्ड्स द हाइड्रोजन लाइक वाइज ओके सो दैट द शेयरिंग ऑल्सो एपन एट द सेम टाइम अनइक्वल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विल ऑल्सो ऑकर a dipole moment is a quantity that describes two opposite charges separated by a distance or the product of the product of magnitude of negative 
or positive charge. Keep in mind the product multiplication should be, will be there of magnitude or values of whom negative or positive charge and the distance between the centers of the positive and negative charges is called dipole moment. Is called dipole moment. So what we need to do? You need to take the product product of their charges. You need to multiply the charges, and also you need to consider the distance between them. Two things I am repeating: multiplication of charges and distance between these two atoms. Multiplication of charges, distance between these two atoms. These two factors will give us dipole moment. These are the two factors of the dipole moment needed to be considered. Denoted by mu. Here you can see. Denoted by mu. Dipole moment is a vector quantity. Vector quantity, scalar and vector quantity. Vector quantity always having the direction. Scalar quantity always have the magnitude only. It doesn't have the direction. So it has a magnitude as well as direction. Okay. If a molecule, if a molecule has a dipole moment, then we call it polar. Okay. It is now a part of vector quantity. Okay, carbon dioxide. Take the example of carbon dioxide. In carbon dioxide, the equal dipoles in the bonds are in exactly opposite directions, and so cancel each other out. The overall molecule has no dipole moment, means they are non-polar. Their symmetry. their structure their arrangement will give us equal strength in both the side so that carbon dioxide are non polar compound okay now how to draw how to show how to represent the dipole moment very simple dipole moment is a vector quantity obviously it will have the direction and is represented by small arrow this is a small arrow this is a small arrow with tail at the positive center and head pointing toward the negative center here you can notice hydrogen is contained with less electron chlorine is contained with more electron so that the arrow the arrow will show the direction towards the chlorine base of the arrow will be towards less electron negative atom and the head of the arrow will be towards the more electron negative atom okay so in this way we can draw we can represent the dipole molecule and its dipolar nature from where to where or the where we can easily guess where the electron cloud will be will it be towards the chlorine yes it will be with the chlorine will it be towards the hydrogen no it is not with the hydrogen unequal distribution of electron is there and this this representation this sign is uh, the indication that a complete molecule is a dipolar molecule if you can see the the representation in this manner here after the dipole moment of sl molecule is 1.03 d d by and dipole of sl may be represented as this so i hope you got the good understanding of dipole moment i have given the understanding of dipole moment not only the understanding of dipole moment earlier i have correlated it with our therapy how dipole moment of a solvent or the how the dipole moment of a molecule of a solvent helping us to get more biological absorption of drug if our drug will get polar solvent then obviously it would get dissolved very quickly with much more extent and then only the absorption of drug in biological membrane 
inside our body will be more bioavailability will be more so dipolar molecule or dipole moment as a phenomena dipole moment helping us through solvent to get more absorption of drug okay so this is the basics about the dipole moment as you can see the formula earlier we have seen that uh, dipole moment is represented by mu it is a product of charges and the distance between them the product of charge and distance between them a quantitative measures of polarity of bond it is dipole moment mu which is the product of the charge q and the radius r is the distance between the charges two charges mu is equal to q into r q is the charge of electron which is 1.6 Uh, 6021 7662 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs, and R is the distance. So 1 d by is equal to 3.325 into 10 to the power minus 3 cent coulomb meter, which is the SI unit of this. Coulomb is a, a, a unit for charge, and a radius is obviously as a distance, so that it is having the meter. Got it? so this is the 1 d by 1 uh, unit of dipole moment so one unit of dipole moment you can easily see it is this much formula is this one okay so i think you got the understanding of this also it may come for the objectives example they have given here you will see mu is equal to 0d with carbon tetrachloride whenever covalent molecule will be there but as you can as you have seen in the carbon dioxide in a similar manner although there will be uh, there will be existence of much more electron in both the side of carbon tetrachloride but every side is nullifying the magnitude of the other side one side is nullifying the magnitude of other side as you can see from the diagram here concentrate on the arrows result resultant of these two bond dipole is towards this side resultant of these two bond dipole is towards opposite side both are having with same magnitude but opposite direction so that they are nullifying each other just like the tug of war they are nullifying each other both the side is having same strength but in opposite direction so that in total carbon tetrachloride is not a polar molecule because they are having zero d mu value is equal to zero carbon tetrachloride keep the keep in mind the examples of all this whereas this molecule is having mu is equal to 1.62d as you can see resultant of these two bonds dipole is very less towards one side and much more in total by these two bond towards the opposite side so that although some sort of nullifying property will be there but still in total in total you will get mu is equal to 1.62d the individual bond dipoles do not cancel in dichloromethane it has a dipole moment so dichloromethane is is a uh, molecule having some sort of dipole moment so i hope you are understanding all these things similarly several examples they have given greater the electronegativity difference between the bonded atom greater in the dipole moment dipole moment now one scale they have for dipole moment of hydrogen halide are in the order hydrogen fluoride is greater than hcl is greater than hbr is greater than hr because of more electronegativity 
okay similarly this molecule is uh, having more electronegativity towards this region so that in total and basically they are unequal 1.81d similarly for this 0.70 similarly for this 0.51 this is nullifying each other non polar carbon tetra tetra means four tetra chloride non polar methane sorry uh, what is this anybody anyone which is this molecule which is this molecule HCl3 okay let it be just a concentrate over here propene propene now hydrochloric yeah let it be we will first concentrate uh, let me tell you it is having the uh, electronegativity negativity toward the chlorine because it is contained with three chlorine okay and in other side uh, one hydrogen will be there, there only so that it becomes a electropositive center this becomes a electronegative center now here in propene 0.35d in butene 0.33d another butene m is equal to 0 now see uh, these two these two m is equal to 0 m is equal to 0.33d so here you can see that uh, the structure, the structure or uh, conformation and configuration, both the things, all the things are contributing in the magnitude of the dipole moment. So that we need to focus on to the constitutive property. As the structure is getting changed, the dipole moment value will may also get changed okay so always we have to we need to categorize it in the form of either additive positive or qualitative property of that particular basic property i'm talking about application very simple earlier only we told that it is having it is it is being applicable in quantification of solubilization so that it is a uh, highly important in qualitative analysis as well as quantitative analysis too as it is giving the uh, it is it is giving the value so obviously it is contributing toward the towards the quantification or in the quantification of the of the drug substances in the sample okay and obviously identity will be there identity more identity, uh, very quick identity or accurate identity will be occur with this dipole moment as a property. Okay. So all this about the uh, dipole moment. So molecular dipole depends on the geometry of the molecule. When the molecule does not, possess, uh, who is talking? Keep yourself muted. When the molecule does not possess a net dipole moment, the molecule is non-polar. When the molecule possesses a net dipole moment, the molecule is polar. Okay. So with this, we will stop our lecture. Now let me take the attendance.